let's take a look at two harder than average factoring problems together. So let's say your math homework assignment has this staring you down and it says factor completely. So you look at this and you go, mm, okay, this isn't my usual AX squared plus BX plus C. So my next step will be to factor out the greatest common factor. That means something that is multiplied into each term. So if I start with my numbers, I have a 12, a negative three and a nine. And I see that each one of those contains a three as a factor. So I'm gonna start by pulling out that three and I'm gonna leave room here for what's gonna be left. Then I'll take a look at my X's. I've got an X squared, an X and an X to the third. The greatest common factor there is my lowest degree of X, right? I can't divide an X squared out of X or an X cubed out of X, but I can divide an X out of each one of these. And then finally, I'm gonna look at my Y's. Y to the fourth, Y to the fifth, Y to the second. Again, it's gonna be my lowest degree of Y. Y to the second can come out of each of those. And so that means that my greatest common factor of these three terms is three X Y squared. And now, I'm gonna factor this out of each of these terms and write what is left. Now, don't forget, factor basically means division. So my 12 divided by three leaves me with four. My X squared divided by X leaves me with X. And my Y to the fourth divided by Y squared leaves me with, and that's what's left of my first term. So now I'm gonna do it again with my second term. Negative three divided by three leaves me with, negative one, I'm just gonna write the minus, I'm not gonna write times one because that's the same thing. X divided by X leaves me with, again, one, so I'm not gonna write that. And Y to the fifth divided by Y squared. When I divide, I subtract, so that's Y to the third. If that when I divide, I subtract isn't familiar to you, take a look at this video um, on the acronym MAD SPAM, which is your sort of hack for how to remember your exponent rules. Okay, continuing, nine divided by three leaves me with three. X to the third divided by X leaves me with X squared and Y squared divided by Y squared leaves me with one. So my factored form so far looks like that. And now I ask myself, is what's left here in any way a form of AX squared plus BX plus C? Well, I do have a Y squared here and I do have an X squared there, but my middle term is not an XY. And so this is not a quadratic. So therefore, what I've got right here is as factored as this gets. Okay, let's take a look at that next one. Now, when this shows up in your factoring homework, you've got one, two, three, four terms. So it is definitely not a quadratic. When you have four terms, the first thing to try doing is grouping. And if you've never done this before, check out these videos, which break it down a little more, but we're gonna continue at a faster pace. Grouping starts by grouping into the first two terms and the last two terms. And then for each of these, we're gonna do the same thing we did in the other problem. We're gonna find the greatest common factor of each grouping and pull it out. So when I look at my first, Three and two, they share no common factor. X cubed and X squared, my lowest degree of X, X squared could come out of both. And so that will look like this, where I've divided each of these terms by my X squared. Now I go here, 18 and 12, those share a common factor. A six divides out of both of those. When I check my X's, this has an X, this does not. So I can't factor an X out. So six is all I got. And when I factor that out, I am left with three X minus two. Now, here's your checkpoint. What is within the two sets of parentheses must be the same. If it is not, then you cannot factor by grouping and likely you cannot factor. But it is the same, which means it is now the greatest common factor of this first term plus this second term. So I may pull it out of both terms. And what's left of this term when I factor out three X minus two is, and what's left of this term is, and that is the fully factored term. Now, before we move on, I wanna take a quick look here. X squared plus six. Okay, because this is a plus, 
This cannot be factored any further with real answers. We can have imaginary answers here. And check out my videos on I if you want to see what imaginary numbers are. If instead this had said minus, then this could be considered a difference of squares, especially if this were a perfect square at the end, and we could continue factoring. So if you're, one of your terms has an x squared or an x cubed, check to see whether you can continue to factor. But in this case, because of our plus, that is our fully factored form. All right, go check out my factoring playlist to get more factoring problems. Take a look at the X method, review grouping, review difference of cubes and sum of cubes and difference of squares. Uh, leave any problems in the chat that you'd like some help with. Consider subscribing to my channel so you know when I put out a new video. And as always, keep on mapping.